working mom is hard. Add in a pandemic and increase the chaos. Having to balance work, work from home, kids, homeschooling, and more is no easy task. The goal is to find balance while keeping your family together and focused on a positive future. Today, we gather five strong and independent working mothers to speak on their experiences throughout this pandemic and share the ways in which they have found that balance. At Florida Credit Union, banking is built on relationships supported by friendly service and expert advice. FCU members get it. Competitive rates on business and real estate loans for companies big and small. Florida Credit Union, member owned, community proud. Welcome to the session, ladies. And if we'd like to start, I'll start with who's at the top of my screen, Stacy Bertrand. Hello, everyone. My name is Stacy Bertrand. I am the Vice President of Economic Development at the Greater Gainesville Chamber of Commerce. I am a single widowed parent. My husband passed away 10 months ago. And um, I am the parent of of four boys, ages 14 to four. Thank you for having me here today. All right, and next up, Nicole Irving. Hi, I'm Nicole Irving. I am the publisher and owner of Irving Publications. We publish Giggle Magazine and Wellness 360. I am also the mom of three boys, um, 16, almost 15 and 12. And I share duties with my husband, but um, we are definitely a working chaotic family. Next up, Edwina Hurst. All right, I'm Edwina Hurst, the co-owner of Maple Street Biscuit Company. We uh, franchise two restaurants here in Gainesville, my husband and I. Um, and we have two children, um, an 11-year-old who attends The Rock. Um, and then we also have a three-year-old. Um, my family is a little unique in that we're a blended family, but that is fun. So we get to co-parent with a whole nother household. Dr. Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie Shoemaker Holmes. I am the only Canadian in the bunch. I am a sociologist and I support women and mothers in my practice. Um, I call myself an empowerment specialist because what I do is I work to, to help women recenter themselves in their lives and prioritize their needs and their time. I started all of this because I had a five year old, I had a baby five years ago and I um, experienced severe postpartum depression and anxiety. That meant that I had to tell my story uh, when I was well enough to do so. And I started a blog called Eating Her Young. Um, and from there, so many women said, me too, me too, me too. I decided to do this as my career. So I have a five year old uh, and a partner and we're, you know, the three musketeers. And and last but certainly not least, Lisa McGarry. Hi, I'm Lisa McGarry, co-owner of Celebrate Primary Care. We're a direct primary care practice here in Gatesville. I am married with three children. We have one off the payroll, which is great. He's actually, we're part of a blended family, so we went through that stuff that you went through. So, um, but we're kind of past it-ish. Guess you're never really... Anyway, so my, I have a daughter that's 17, she's a senior, and then a daughter that's 11, and she's in the fifth grade. I guess, you know, first and foremost, um, the pandemic has affected everyone in a massive way. Um, with mothers, the New York Times says, is really uh, the shock absorber of society at this point uh, because of the fact that not only are you working and um, pursuing your own career, but you are also maintaining the work-life balance with children, homeschooling, virtual schooling, whatever else is thrown your way. Um, so what changes would you say have been implemented in your own household since the pandemic began in March? I was very surprised at how my sons, especially my youngest, how much he was affected by not being able to see his friends. I remember one day I was working from the house Today I'm at my office. I'm normally at my house. Um, and he just came and he just fell on the floor and he was just crying. And he just, he's like, this is horrible. I miss my friends. And I didn't see that coming from a 12 year old. Um, I, and he's my least social of the three. Um, but I realized that that Xbox, as much as I, you know, did not like him to be on it, it was the only way that he could actually verbally speak to his friends. And so he felt that connection. And so we had to kind of throw all of our, 
formal rules out, especially during the summer. I mean, obviously school's a little bit different, but especially in the beginning one summer, because we only had a couple weeks of this um, when we were all at home and everyone was still trying to figure out what was going on. And there was a lot of what ifs and kind of chaotic, but really during that gap of that summer to keep three boys at home majority of the time, it was difficult. So we throw kind of like the screen time rule out the window and now we're trying to reel it back in now that school's here. But again, there's not as much um, activity with friends during the school year as there were, um, especially since they're still really all talking with masks on all day. So that was one thing that we implemented, as well as we don't have a dining room table anymore because that's my office. So we're eating on the couch and we're eating in the room. And I finally told Shane yesterday, I said, enough is enough. I'm coming back to the office. I want my dining room table and I miss my family time at dinner. Um, because we are kind of displaced. So that's another thing that I think realizing what we missed. For us, mine was uh, a little opposite in the home. So Jason is a commercial realtor. Um, and so business for him slowed down. So he had to come home. Um, and then for me with the restaurant, that is my full-time gig. Um, so I was at the restaurant um, day in, day, day out um, on phone calls, trying to figure out how we pivot our business during that time um, so that we could still support um, our community um, and also, you know, bring in a profit for our restaurant. A little bit for me, I was a little resentful at first um, because I saw it as Jason able to be at home and I'm out here working and I'm missing time with my kids. Um, but being able to have a, a co-parent um, at home that could kind of pick up the slack there. Um, I did have to balance a little bit of mommy guilt from time to time, um, not being there, not cooking, um, not providing for um, my family, my husband, um, and him having to really step up um, in that role. But, you know, it was just a season um, that we are thankfully uh, coming out of, but it was a blessing to have a husband that was ready to step in um, and really help. And then my mom lives with us. Um, that was new for us as well. And so I had a lot of support at home, um, but I was very tired um, working out outside of the home. But family dinner. So we have a table, Nicole, that didn't turn into a desk. We're lucky. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. And so being able to have that family time, um, we were very intentional about that. Like, really having hard conversations, like no eating in front of the TV. We're going to come together um, and do things as a family. So mine kind of was a little opposite of where Nicole was. So. Running a medical clinic, you can't really like work remote. I mean, you kind of can, but like we had to have somebody in the office for blood draws and med refills and, you know, and I'm not a sit, I can't stay at home. Like the, I don't have the gene actually. Um, I know people that are really good at that and that is not me. I'm a peopler and if you told me I had to stay in my house for four months, I would not, it would not be good for anyone to find me. So my husband is a happy as a lark, loves to be home. He's been working remote from the get go, you know, so I was coming to the office every day, but then the kids were at home and I'm lucky they're older, but my 11 year old, she was sitting at the time. I don't, I don't know if she actually passed fourth grade or they were just nice. I mean, yeah. I swear every day, you know, I, one morning I went to get her cause I wanted her to come and like either. So we have a place at the beach and we were going back and forth. And I was like, you either have to be at the bar or you have to be at the kitchen table if we're home. You just have to be up with your computer. I went in one time. I'm like, where is she? She's camera off in bed with a snack and a dog. I was like, what is happening? Get out of bed. You know? And so she was like, oh, I hate this mom. And I'm like, babe, I know nobody loves this. This is not planned, intended. This is not what we signed up for, but we have to do what we have to do. This is teaching you tenacity and ability to be flexible. And we're just going to have to deal with it. So, but every day, like, did you do all your assignments? And, you know, Thank goodness we were at a school that could pivot quickly. I mean, literally, we didn't miss, miss a beat. Like, we went from in-person to online in a day. I don't even know how they did it. They were magicians, which is great. But, you know, the, she's like, oh, my public school friends got three weeks off, and I've had to work the whole time. And nah, 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 you know, my 17-year-old, she's like, oh, my grades count for college, and I'm in, whatever I have to do. So she, I didn't have any problems with her. She was fine. She missed her friends, but she just... She's just easier and with this, but oh my gosh. I'm like, did you do all your things? So she had to like, Nicola vouch for this. She's got kids at that school. There were seven platforms 
that they had to go to, right? So they had Google Classroom and then their math was on this thing and then their English was on this thing and then their projects were on this thing. So there were like all these different places that they had to go. I didn't even know all the logins. I'm like, I don't even know where you have to go. She'd show me her to-do list. I'm like, can you ask your teacher? Like, I don't have any idea. So, and then the school has these generated notices. Like, so she's missing this assignment. She's missing this assignment. She's missing this assignment. So then I'm apologizing to teachers, asking how she needs to do it, seeing how I can help, you know? And I'm just like, oh, this is not, this is not good. This is, I'm like, I don't know if she's going to make it out of fourth grade. <laughs> she's already the oldest in her class. Like, are they going to hold her back? So it was less than ideal. And to talk about screen time. I mean, it's like a fight how to get her off her phone at all because that was her only way to communicate. And she's very social too. And just, you know, we couldn't do gymnastics and, you know, all the things where she was around people, couldn't do any sports. We couldn't, you know, we had very limited friends that we were around, you know, so yeah, not um, zero out of five stars would not recommend. In a really interesting period of transition. So I had just made the decision in January to start my business. So that's when I sort of soft launched it. Um, and then I was completing um, a small business program funded by the uh, government here in Ontario. And so I was very, very fortunate to have that structure and accountability and, and the fact that it ended um, just before <laughs> everything, you know, we wrapped up sort of in, in February and then I did sort of a real launch in March. And so I, I maybe had three in-person appointments before it was like, so there's a pandemic. Um, and so, uh, in terms of, in terms of recommending starting a business during a pandemic, I didn't think it was probably the best idea that I'd ever had. The pandemic though itself was a blessing in disguise for my, um, for my business because it forced me online, first of all. Um, and it allowed me to really, um, to have a very broad client base because of that accessibility, right? Um, however, I was having to build this business around my partner's uh, work schedule and around being the primary caregiver. So um, though the, these things were new for me. And um, Edwina, like you were saying, you were kind of resentful uh, of your husband getting to spend time with your children. I was like, I have to be the primary caregiver now? So, uh, pardon me? I don't hmm didn't sign up for that. Um, so I was very resentful because the pandemic meant two things for me. And one was that all of a sudden I was a stay at home mom. And that is, um, like, if you know me, you know, that that is the complete opposite of, of who I am and how I understand myself. Right. So that was a real blow. And then it also meant, um, it also meant that I couldn't do my business. Right. So <laughs> So I was pissed for like a week <laughs> as I navigated and processed this new reality for me. Um, I'm, you know, and I really had to sort of ask myself, like, what's the point of starting a business right now? You know, like, is there a point? And I'm really glad that the answer to that was yes, because it had taken me a long time to get there um, to make that leap. And so doing it in and around my partner's, um, you know, lunch break, because he's an essential worker, I should say. Um, so doing it in and around his work uh, day meant that I got to build uh, slowly and steadily and get to do what I want to do with my life and my career, which is just like the biggest gift that I have ever given myself. <laughs> oh, yes. And I also decided this. My, my daughter was in junior kindergarten. And so it was like, <laughs> I am not teaching my child kindergarten. I'm, I'm not teaching my child how to um, read. I, my mother was an elementary school teacher for 35 years. I did not pick that profession because I know what it's about. And I know that I am not suited that. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Very, very PC. <laughs> even, even though I have been an educator and a, and a researcher my almost my whole entire adult life, I teach adults, right? I teach post-secondary or I have taught post-secondary in the past and I know that I don't want to teach children. So our homeschooling consisted of like a summer of bugs. We just like, we looked for bugs all the time. We did, you know, I just accepted, I just accepted um, who I am 
And that meant um, that my daughter and I got to spend t- unexpected a lot of time together in a way that both of us enjoyed. Yeah, I think that's an important thing that uh, I, most people have realized that obviously you're having to pivot in your professional and business life, but also in your personal as well. You know, uh, perhaps schooling doesn't look exactly like it has in the past, especially when you're the new teacher. <laughs> I am happy to say that I don't have those skills. I'm fine with that, right? Like I'm fine with it. I'm, I've got some other mad skills, but a child to read is like, sounds like the seven circle of hell to me. So <laughs> newfound appreciation for our teachers, right? Oh yeah. Absolutely. I think if any, if, if anything has come out of all this, it is, I mean, we, I always appreciate my teachers, but it's even tenfold now. And I teach college as well. And no, you could not pay me to go sit with kindergartners. There's just, no, I would be a kindergartner. I just sit on the floor and wail. It's just, <laughs> I mean, there's a special place in heaven for these people. They are just godsons. They are angels on the earth. They are, they're just miracle workers. And I applaud all of them. Pray I'm not one of them one day. And, and so I used to be a school teacher. I used to teach kindergarten. Fourth and fifth why am I not wait, why wait, wait, not wait. surprised? <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough to be in the classroom ever again. And so, you know, Jackie, when you said I used to be an educator, I used to be an educator, but I left for a very good reason because I don't want to teach little kids anymore. So when the pandemic hit for me, um, we were already obviously going through a a big change in our family, um, just through the trauma that we've been through just in general. And the pandemic actually was, was a blessing, like you said, Jackie, a blessing in disguise for us because it just halted everything. Um, And actually spring break, it happening during spring break was awesome because the kids were getting shipped to their grandparents, to my husband, to my in-laws, to my parents already. And they were, at first they were like, well, maybe we should just take the older ones. I said, they come in a package deal. It's four or none. (laughs) And so they all, all the kids ended up going down to Miami, which was very scary, right? At first, because it's like a hot spot. Um, but, But I was like, no, they've got to go. And um, what ended up happening was that, so I came up with this grand idea to renovate our house, um, which is a big undertaking, but I just felt like it was something that the kids and I needed um, just to declutter, to clear out everything. I mean, it was a massive renovation, um, but again, it was something that was definitely needed. And when the kids, oh, another thing that was new during the pandemic was I had just started therapy. I've never been to a therapist before in my life. I felt like going to church was all I needed, but having someone pass so close to me, which I've never had as well, um, I started seeing a therapist. And guess what happened? The pandemic. So it shifted to to teletherapy, which I realized worked out just fine. And it was something that I just really, really enjoyed um, having a therapist to be able to speak to. Um, And I highly encourage anyone who, you know, just in general, when life happens, you know, it's good to talk to a professional. And I I just really wanted to make that. Um, I also wanted to say that for the children, I really tried to get them into therapy as well, right before the pandemic. Um, And that was a huge challenge. Uh, All of them, one of them went, the majority of them said, I don't need therapy. I'm not doing that. So they didn't end up going to therapy until like a month ago. Go and it's also been worked out very well. We we found someone that they like and that they're willing to open up to and to share. Um, virtual school from age fourteen to four. Now that was really interesting. Um, the fourteen year old, the twelve year old, and the eight year old. Um, they really enjoyed it. I really think the eight year old thought it was a vacation from school. He just like, it was just not, you know, I mean, he's like, this is so cool. I get to jump in the, in the class, out the class. They used to type all these letters in the chat box. I'm like, how is the teacher allowing that? But they did all what they want, whatever they wanted to. The four-year-old also had virtual school. Virtual PE was the funniest. So um, <laughs> the PE teacher is like, bring it, you know, large circles. And my <laughs> child is just sitting there and he looks at me. He's like, this is so boring. And I'm like, do, you know, do the arm circles. He wouldn't do any of it. So he's happy to be back in school, I will say. But overall, it's been a real, really interesting. Um, and we've, oh, one thing, Jackie, that I also wanted to, to piggyback off of is nature. 
Um, when they came back from Miami, we went every day on a bike ride. And I told them it's at five o'clock when I got off the computer, it's nature time and we're going bike riding. Now I can't get them off of Fortnite or what is the other game? I can't remember the other game, this car racing game in which they talk to their friends on. I can't get them off of it to go bike riding with me. Not happening. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. I think that's definitely one of the, uh, the biggest changes because I saw that with my little brother as well is, you know, you always tried to limit the amount of time that they're playing games or that they're on the computer or on their phone. And truly during a pandemic, when you're trying to limit exposure to the amount of people, that's the best way to actually stay connected and get any kind of form of socialization, especially when you really need it when you're growing up. Um, and it's not just friends, Julianne, they, they're on there with their cousins as well. Mm -hmm. So their cousins that they really enjoy playing with, you know, they play with them on, on these games. Obviously, during these times, having some kind of support system and people to be there to help you, whether it be help you with the kids, help you with your business, help you with the day in and day out is huge right now. Uh, so for, for all of you, what has been your biggest support system and how has that worked? And also how has that affected your relationship with this person or these people? Yeah, I'll, I'll start that off. Um, having my children go down to my in-laws, um, was, was amazing and they are a huge support system and just being so close to my husband. And I really appreciate that. My mom also at the time lived with, you know, lived with me. She's now moved to the city of Alachua. But she's been such a huge help. So um, she'll come and cook. She'll pick the kids up. Uh, now that we're back to work, you know, um, most of the week or half of the week, she picks the kids up from school. Uh, and today, for example, today of all days when we're having this meeting, uh, she had a doctor's appointment. So I had to call like our, our old babysitter and say, do you mind? Drop, you know, she, she's going to drop them off for two hours. And she was like, no problem. I'm here for you whenever. So you know, having those people in place and um, them understanding, being understanding to like emergencies, it has been so, so helpful. I'll, um, I'll go next. So Shane and I both work together. Um, and so that's always been the dynamic for the last 11 years, but definitely playing off those roles um, and him helping. And my kids are a little bit older, so they're actually very self-sufficient, which has been great. Um with this, though, unfortunately, my parents live 10 houses down from me, but they've kept their distance. So I actually haven't given my mom a hug since March, which is kind of sad. Um, but my dad, but they've come over and, you know, for birthdays or stuff like that. Um, but my dad will make sure we have enough food in the house. He's an amazing Italian cook, so he'll cook for us. He'll stock up on chicken cutlets and meatballs and sauce. So that's his way. That's their way of kind of still helping um, with us. Um, luckily, all their kids' activities were kind of canceled. So that was a newfound time frame that we also were able to connect as well. Um, my son's a competitive gymnast, so we have 25, 24 hours a week of practice normally from 5 to 9 at night. So we were like, yeah, we don't have to drive anywhere. So that was great. Um, and so also after the, for the initial quarantine lockdown, all of a sudden when we kind of started emerging, finding people who you could, friends that you can quarantine with. I don't, I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Um, but there were select few families and children that my children were eventually allowed to hang out with um, in safe protocols and stuff like that. And so feeling okay with that. And that also allowed the kids to kind of go off and separate. Cause if you've had three boys in one house for a long time, can get kind of crazy. Um, and so giving them a break from their siblings as well. So really, you know, leaning on those friends and understanding boundaries and what's going on in each, everyone's houses and stuff like that. Um, and so really, and then just playing off of Shane and I, just like we normally do, he's really Mr. Mom. He, he helps with all the things. I'm very blessed. So really just taking turns with doing stuff. But, you know, I think that that's been the best key and understanding our friends' boundaries as well, I think has also been a, an interesting part as not everyone has their different levels of comfortability with what's going on. And so, and respecting that, and then also explaining to your children the way that their friends, families feel about the 
quarantining as well. Everyone has it. So, you know, some people are like, I feel so bad. So, and so has not been able to get out, but then explaining to them, it's, you know, it's because of this is the way they feel and that's okay. You know, there's so many, so much uncertainty. So, you know, I think it's also shown the kids some empathy um, and just keeping up relationships with friends in different ways. You know, it's, I don't know, it's just a struggle. <laughs> there's like, you keep talking, but it's, you know, no, I love it because everyone, I mean, at least in this screen alone is, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so you yeah. are speaking it to the masses. <laughs> For us, like I mentioned, my mom moved here in December. Um, so we had, you know, a couple months under our belt before the pandemic hit where we were able to figure out how to all co-parent in one home. <laughs> um, so she came for her grand kids specifically um so she kind of knew her role and she played it well so when everything hit um jason and my mom were home together with the kids jason handled the schoolwork my mom handled the entertainment and i got to kind of run free um and making sure that the business kind of stayed on track um, but other things that help um i have to give much credit to um our son's other set of parents, so his mom and shared dad is what we call them, um, because <clears throat> that's another area um, of support for us. So he's with us a week on, um, and he goes to them a week. Um, so week on, week off, um, and being able to keep each other up to date with what was happening in each other's health and families, because you know they have a, a daughter that lives with them, and we have our daughter that lives with us, um, and they were going to work, and we were going to work, and so being able to communicate. Um, you know, hey, we may need you to keep Josiah uh, for a couple more days this week because this is going on. Um, so we have a really, really, really good blended family, working family uh, dynamic. Um, and then, you know, the other thing, so our kids, you know, again, weren't able to go out and socialize much. Um, I like what you said, Nicole, about understanding other people's boundaries and respecting their boundaries, um, because we did have a neighbor um, that shared with us, hey, you know, the boys usually play together, but, you know, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to keep our son in the house. And so having to explain that to our son, um, that, hey, there's nothing wrong with you um, or us or anything like that, but you know, everyone has their different boundaries. Um, I don't think me and Lisa had any boundaries. We kind of hung out during the whole time <laughs> with our families and I loved it. I needed it. Um, Jason and I would go to their home and, you know, let the kids play together as well. So we were cool with that. Um, and then another thing that helped us is um, Jason is from Chicago. I'm from Georgia. Um, but I believe our families got much closer during this time because every week we had a scheduled Zoom call where we would play games. There were icebreakers. And I mean, you're talking about 10 to 15 people on one Zoom from every state, Chicago, Texas. Um, and those are things that we didn't do before the pandemic. Like we would see each other at holidays and that would be it. And so I think that was a good support, knowing that we had that family call, that family time. Um, every week was really, really good for the kids and for us. So it is true. You know, you find your uh, your sense of community not only in your community, within your family, within your friends, and you really do create your own uh, quarantine family, <laughs> whether it be with friends or neighbors or whoever it is that you you have to not only trust each other, but be honest with each other about what kind of interactions and things you're doing so that you can maintain that level of safety. And it's it's been really neat to see people come together like that. Yeah, so we have, um, like I said, we have a place in Flagler and uh, we had it, we've had it, it's a year, a little over a year, but we, we had it for, you know, from June of last year and then quarantine hit. And we could only use it once a month because the kids were so busy and we were so active in church and there just wasn't time. During quarantine, we were there half the time. We made friends, you know, we call them our quarantine friends and we talk every day and, you know, they just, they're neighbors behind us, but they just brought us in. And so now we have maybe more friends in Flagler than we have in Gainesville. I've been here for 30 years, you know, like, um, so that was definitely a silver lining and they have a daughter that's close in age with my youngest and my oldest just gets along with everybody, you know, so she, you know, and then the, they're teenagers. So they love that a 17 year old is nice to them. And, you know, so it's just, it's, it, it's been great. Like that part, part of it's been good. And then we have our, you know, our tribe in Gainesville, you know, like Edwin and Jason come over and we have a couple other couples that we um, spend time with too. And 
I just, I, you know, I'm a peopler and I know that. And I knew that before this hit. And so for people like me, like I was dying inside. I mean, I just, you can't, I could, everything's on zoom and you can't touch people. And, you know, so for me, like having to come to term with those feelings and my business partner was very, very afraid. I didn't see her for five weeks. You know, she did everything remote and via zoom. And, you know, I was in the office and I felt very abandoned and very, you know, like, what, what are we doing? Why is it like this? And, um, and, you know, she was just afraid her mom is elderly. And even though she's in good health, like, she's like, I can't get my mom sick, you know, and I understand it. I'm not in that situation, but I, I understood it, but it didn't stop me from feeling af- a- abandoned and afraid. And even though it was a lo- lot, it was illogical feelings. They were still my feelings kind of having to process through all that. And, you know, I got really close with my staff that was here. Some of the people remote worked remote and some were in the office and the ones here, I mean, we're all closer for it. So that I'm grateful for. I mean, it's still hard. I mean, you still can't touch people and you can't people and I'm golfing and I hate golfing and I've been golfing because that's the only way you can be with people. Thanks for golfing with Shane on Saturday. If I don't yes, know. I'm golfing with Shane on Saturday. <laughs> and Tyler. Yeah. And Tyler. I mean, listen, I told him I can't like when I say I can't golf, it's not like, Oh, I can't golf. No, literally I cannot golf. Like I had not touched a golf club until whatever weekend it was three or four weekends ago. Yeah. I mean, other than a putter and playing putt putt. So yes. So yeah. I'm golfing now so that yeah. I can do with people. Yes. It'll be fun. I think that it's really important that you brought up the negative impacts that it has on your relationships. Cause that is huge. Yeah. You know, obviously it's sad to see, but divorce rates have gone up, breakups have gone up. Um, and on top of that, I mean, the reality is, even though we are in, thank God, we are in a world where gender norms are falling off more and more, mm-hmm. and we are able to actually have, you know, our partners come in and cook and clean and do mommy duties because, hey, we're not the only ones that can cook and clean. Um, It's amazing to have that. I know that even as, you know, a woman who's engaged and I don't have any children, I still feel like, oh, I should be cooking and I should be cleaning. I still feel that. And I am, you know, the first one to say I'm independent, but I still feel that. So I know other women feel that as well. And I know that that has to impact, you know, your relationships with family members and with partners. Um, have you all had any of those kind of negative impacts on relationships? So for me, what was really interesting is that the, um, is the pandemic timeline followed the same timeline as my postpartum experience. So it happened, you know, my daughter was born in the spring. Um, you know, I was like housebound, like we all are after, you know, having a child and all that kind of thing. And, and my life was completely um, upended and different. So in order to be able to cope um, when I had my daughter and I had severe postpartum depression and anxiety, um, I relied really heavily on my mother, like so heavily. I actually needed someone with me all the time, you know, being retired and all that kind of stuff. She sort of, <laughs> she fit the bill and the fact that she's always been there for me, you know, at whatever time in my life and will sit with me <laughs> through anything. And so what happened was, you know, I, I topped it out for the period that I needed to, in order to determine that, you know, we were being as safe as possible. And given that my, my partner is an essential worker, right. Just making sure everyone was safe, right. There are so many people to keep safe as, as one household. And my parents are also older and, you know, have, have their own health stuff. Um, But as soon as I could, I spend every afternoon with my mother. That's honestly how I've been able to survive motherhood. You know, I hope that the services that I provide and the other services, you know, as you were talking about, Stacey, in terms of therapy and in terms of talking to that objective outsider and that person that can help support and guide and mentor and nurture you. Um, you know, I really hope that that all mothers can connect with that person, especially if they don't have a supportive mother in their life. Um, and it's true that not everyone does. So 
I'm, I'm grateful and fortunate. And just like the experience of my postpartum depression and anxiety connected my mother and I, so did this. So I'm, I'm profoundly grateful for that. What's challenging for me is um, that some of my biggest support systems have been my friends here in Gainesville um, and my bridesmaids. And a lot of them um, were extremely paranoid, like they should be, with COVID-19. And so that, that additional support, um, by, sometimes they would take the kids, you know? I mean, that all went away. Like, I mean, was gone. Um, but what I am grateful for is that they were still there by phone. Um, and so, I, you know, I talked to... I feel like I talk to at least eight people per day. Oh my goodness. It's, it's, it's probably down to six, you know, but I mean, you just really need that when you're, um, you can't, you know, you can't say, I'm going to tell your dad when I get home, you know, I, you know how many times I, I really want to say that. And then I'm like, wait, don't do that. That's traumatizing. Don't do it. You know, I'm like, I'm going to tell your grandfather, I'm going to tell your uncle, you know? So I've made up all sorts of things. They're like, no, don't call granddaddy. I'm like, well, I am, you know, but, um, just being, even though that, that was a real negative to me, and I know you said negative, you know, you know, what are some, some realities that came out? Um, the realities that I think some of my friends, some of the friends that we, I normally hang out with in person, just, you know, that relationship has kind of separated a little bit, um, but I still keep in touch with them by phone, and I still, you know, try my best to, to, um, to share my life with them, I, and, and for them to share their lives with me. I think that's super important. Uh, um, Facebook has been awesome. Just, I mean, in reality, you know, being able to keep in touch with people through Facebook has been, been amazing as well. So yeah, social media definitely has been helpful in that sense. And so in the same way that social media has been helpful, um, it actually is a downer in our marriage, um, because that can be like, you know, so I was going out to work, but then when I come home, Jason hasn't been around people like I have all throughout the day. Um, but because I'm working, I'm not on social media. So I'm trying to catch up with what's going on with people. And so <laughs> it was just causing some issues in our home to the point where I've actually had to put social media so far away on my screens and label it time thief. Um, because it was, I was like a kid, like so addicted to the screen time because and he's like, why is that so interesting to you and not me? And I'm like, because they're my friends. It's entertainment. It's like you watch football. I like to catch up with people so that when I see people, I can say, oh, how's your mom? Or I saw you took a vacation. Like, that is important to me. And it's just a different form of entertainment, um, but was also becoming detrimental in me being able to communicate with my husband. Um, and so I guess that would be a, a downside for, um, for me. And I, I'm like Lisa, I'm a peopler. Um, and so our church community, whether it be small groups um, or being able to, you know, catch up with friends in person. I love socializing. That not being able to happen, I felt very lonely um, in some moments uh, during this. Although I have a great family in the house, like, but that's my kid or that's my husband. I need more social time is what I was feeling. Um, mm -hmm. But the blessing in that is being able to, like Stacy say, you know, bring things to a halt and slow down and really kind of put the focus back on family and why do I need to reach out so much? So I was having to do some introspection um, and also jumped into some counseling um, because mentally it was like wearing on me. Um, and I'm, I'm normally an upbeat, optimistic, fun person, but, you know, with the, the stress in marriage, coming home to a frustrated guy because He's had to open up five different windows to help our son with school and he's frustrated and then business not coming in for mm -hmm. him as a realtor. Um, and he's wanting all of my attention when I get home. It was like, oh, my goodness, I just came from <laughs> Desert Storm <laughs> at the restaurant. And now to come home to this um, was a bit of a strain. And so I am for counseling. Um, I, like you, Stacey, had never gone a day in my life, was always one that, you know, was leader in church, the church thing, God is who we go to, but I was like, no, 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 I need, I need some, some outside resource. Yeah. Counseling can be a great thing. Counseling, therapy, all of it. I am a huge, huge supporter of that, uh, even prior to, you know, COVID-19, 
Um, but it is amazing kind of like, you know, Dr. Jackie was saying to have that outsider's unbiased perspective, because you do get so caught up in your head that it is nice to have, you know, that person that isn't you giving you some thoughts and ideas. Um, there's been a profound sadness of the things that I took for granted, um, when the world was open, especially in my business. Um, I miss the galas. I miss the networking. I miss seeing my people, my clients who have become my friends on a regular basis. Um, you know, and those things were, we're on, we're on charity season right now and you know, it's virtual and I, and that's been hard for me. Um, the other negative is, you know, family time has been great. Um, but it's a lot, um, kind of the same thing. Like you, I'm talking with my staff all day on Slack because I have to, and then I'm talking with my readers and doing stories and photo shoots and whatever else I'm doing for my clients. And then all of a sudden it's like mommy and wife and all on top of each other, but then also working with my husband and then having the kids at home while we're working. And it's, it's a lot. And even for an extreme people or, you know, person like me, it, it can get, it can get exhausting and it's hard to sometimes find yourself in places that you thought like, this is easy. I'll be home. This is great. Um, but there's been a profound sadness as well. I want my reality back. I want my normal back. I'm, I feel very heavy with a burden of something's just not right. And trying to figure that out. I just want to go do what I used to be able to do without second guessing things. And I miss that. You know, I'm supposed to be getting on a plane in a couple of weeks to go see my sister whose wedding got canceled in August. And my p- parents are already there. My brother lives there. And I'm, I don't really want to do it, but I'm going to do it because I miss my family so much. Um, but I miss that. I miss, I don't, I'm not a good change person. I'm a little bit control freak, the yeah, Shane. Um, so there's those negative things where there is always a silver lining to everything. But I think for the most part, just, I think my kids know that I'm really, really irritable. And it's, it, as a parent, it's hard because I have the weight of the business, the weight of my staff, the weight of, you know, my other responsibilities. And then I have the kids and, you know, that's hard when I'm just not comfortable. I'm just, I'm just not me, you know, and I, I, and I, I have gone to therapy during all this as well. So I'm an advocate and um, I think that's huge. Um, Counting blessings is important, but I think that, and I don't think there's going to be a go back to normal at all. It's going to be a new reality. So finding, figuring that out, you know, and in this crazy time and keeping your business alive. And this is just crazy. I think we're probably speaking to the masses. I don't think we're alone in doing this. You know, I don't think we're alone in feeling this. And Nicole, you brought another, you brought another good point up about charity, a bit charitable season, but what about all of the volunteering that we do as well? I don't know if you all do any art, you know, sit on any boards, but you know, I sit on the board of the YMCA that got even more complicated because of COVID my husband's nonprofit. I, I um, became the chairwoman of the nonprofit of, for the mm-hmm. board because I, you know, I felt like I, I needed to be. I mean, so none of that stopped. It actually became more complicated. So yeah, pivoting and not sure if the pivoting is working or not. Like I said, I also teach at UF, and all my classes were moved online. And I'm an in-person. Let me feel. Let me like, like just like feel together, students. Let's just learn together. And I'm like, I can't. I can't get to you through the computer. I'm hoping it's resonating, but I don't know. You know, and and one of my classes would bring the kids to the community. That was something I taught them. You know, and probably some of you have met some of my students in the process. Um, you know, and that's that's been a struggle too. Is just how how is this going to continue on and do the best that we can. Um, no, obviously, you know, you're speaking to the massive stress that once again comes from juggling all these different jobs, you know, whatever different hat you're putting on at that time for you in particular and your family, what would be, you know, for our takeaway in this, uh, the major thing that has really helped you to relieve stress and push forward towards that positive viewpoint for your family as a whole? Mm -hmm. For the first three months, it was red wine. (laughs) (laughs) I am with you. So, you know, I feel like for me at the beginning, like under times of stress, I turned to food and having drinks. Like that's my like go-to. And I just lost a bunch of weight for my son's wedding. um, And I was in a great place. Like I felt good and I was 
working out in the gym and I was like doing all of the stuff and I was eating well and like that just came to a screeching halt. The positive of all this though is I, I learned a lot about myself. Uh, I feel like there were a lot of teaching moments for the kids. I don't, I, I cannot profess that I did any of this parenting stuff during quarantine, right? I mean, I don't even know if my kid really passed fourth grade, but um, you know, we got to have some good conversations, you know, about how other people feel and being respectful of that. Um, I, I got an opportunity to do some introspection that wasn't necessarily fun. You know, I have a counselor I've seen for a long time. Unfortunately, my 17 year old took every single one of my sessions because she needed it more. You know, we talk about, um, the isolation and how hard it is. And she'd been in a relationship with someone for a year. They were very close. They were, you know, he was at our house or she was at his house probably three or four nights a week and it stopped and it, it destroyed the relationship, you know? which I know they're young, but for her, it's totally devastating. And I felt bad. She was so sad. Um, so she stole all my sessions. Um, I could probably use some, uh, but every time I schedule one, she still it. So, um, you know, I, I, I believe in, I, I know, like, I'm going to schedule three times as many and I'm going to hopefully get one. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's been great because we have her to lean on and we already had a relationship with her. And so she already, she knows us. And if it came to a pinch, I could get in, you know, but I feel like, um, you know, I've kind of sucked it up and I still complain about, you know, not being with people very much, but, you know, I've just found ways and I found people who aren't afraid to come over and spend time with us and, you know, let the kids do things. And, you know, we've gotten to strengthen those relationships and I have quarantine friends and Flagler and that's great. Um, So, you know, I, I think it's been a great opportunity. I think it got, gave us time to slow down and spend time together. And I think that was good. There, there were some good opportunities for learning for sure. So like you, Lisa, I figured out some things about myself. Um, as strong of a woman as I am and positive, um, I realized that I did, you know, need a little bit of an outside voice and perspective. So the counseling helped during those stressful times. Um, I found a love for my bicycle again. So I'm up to riding about uh, 50 miles a week on my bike. Um, and I love it. I just did my longest ride the other day, 30 miles. So exercise, um, because a lot of it was, you know, able to be done via Zoom um, because I was not an avid gym goer. Um, I have a gym right across the street from my restaurant and I would not walk across the street, although I paid them 50 bucks a month. Um, and then when things open up a little bit more, I would start scheduling um, massage massages. Um, so those were very helpful um, as well. And then I got back into listening to podcasts. So um, I just looked you up, Jackie, and it may have been Scary Mom that um, I, I, you're familiar with, but I uh, found podcasts that I could listen to. Um, we weren't in church much, but I was able to connect with our church online or connect with other churches online. My faith is a big part of who I am um, and what keeps me on a high level. Um, and so, yeah, those are some of the things that I used to de-stress during those times. I think Thank that... You. That's always really important to remember is that self-care aspect. When you are juggling so many different things, it's hard to pause and really just focus on yourself for a minute. Even if it's just locking yourself in a bedroom and watching a movie by yourself, like those times are important. (laughs) Yeah, so I actually lock myself in the bathroom bathroom um in the shower I take they're they're probably I don't know they're wondering what the heck I'm doing in there but um I I love the shower so these are just a couple of things I do you can put off five masks but I get my nails done I have to go and get my nails done and it is just so relaxing to me I did get some massages I haven't um, been back in a while but I, I definitely do that um music I am like super addicted I used to only listen to gospel I'm super addicted to love songs right now so I will listen to love songs all day all night if you let me um and dream a little and I also found audible oh my gosh like I think I tried it before but um I'm I was in a virtual book club Uh, the book was called blessed in the darkness and I lost the book Clearly, I wasn't reading it that much. So I, I downloaded it on Audible and had the best of time with it. Now I'm on like my fifth book on Audible. And it is the best thing of all. The book club ended, but I'm in a small group devotional virtually as well. 
And it was all of my married friends that we've known for like 15 years and they still let me in the group. I told them, thank you very much. You know, they're so sweet. So they're, 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 we're just all friends and not all the spouses come, but they, you know, it's, it's, it can be couples. Um, and that has been amazing. Uh, call a friend that like, that is literally a lifeline, like call a friend that, you know, you can trust. Um, and then the last thing is cry when you need to cry. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I cry all the time. I cry on the way to work today. Like I saw my son look over at me, like, just like, you know, like just, he's like, cause he doesn't like to show emotions too much. And I was like, you know, trying to, I cried last night during bedtime stories, you know, and my, my middle child said, mom, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. You know, but just cry whenever you need to cry. It, it's okay. Let it all hang out. Yeah. Um, I will listen to music while I'm cooking. I love, so check out Johnny Swim on Spotify. I fell in love with love during this time. And so Modern Love Stories is a podcast that I listen to. Um, they've been on for maybe about three or four years now, but it is just short, real stories, but they turn it into a podcast and I have gone through maybe two years of seasons because they're like 20, 25 minutes long. Death or marriage or dating. They're funny. They're sad. I mean, it's awesome. So check it out. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I think that um, really realizing, you know, what is important to me when it's taken away um, and then realizing what's important to me when it's right there in my face. So being so involved with the community and being a busy um mompreneur, um, teaching all the different things. It also having all that kind of be put on hold for a minute really puts in perspective how much time you're potentially taking away from your family and from your kids and all that kind of other stuff. So that definitely was put in perspective, like, wow, I'm never home this much or wow, this is great. Um, but also realizing, you know, maybe there's more of a balancing act that I can do when the world opens up. But I think also realizing that it's okay not to be okay. Um, because I have cried in my closet. I have just not felt right because like I said, for the various reasons before, just, I miss my old life, but I, but that's okay. Like I can mourn what I used to have. Um, and then sharing that, that it's okay not to be okay. Um, and then having those comfortable people that you text every day. And then all of a sudden, if you're quiet for a moment, they're like, Hey, are you okay? You know, and just having that. And then, you know, really being able to understand and share with your family when you need time alone. Um, I think that's huge. Just speaking up for yourself. I think a lot of times we just go along with what's, what's happening and you just m go through the motions and you're like, yeah, I'm fine whatever. And then just really like putting a pause and I'm like, mommy is not okay. Mommy needs a minute, <laughs> you know, um, and sharing that. And then really just watching my kids grow up and realizing that that phrase that they say that the years will go by fast, but the days will go by slow. Um, my, you know, my oldest is 16 and he'll be out of the house soon. And this time that I was able to have with him over the summer and then my other ones, just being able to connect and have them share things with me on a mom kid level when, you know, they might not have if they're so busy over the summer. And now that the world's kind of opening up again, some of them are hanging out more and stuff. And I'm like, where are you guys going? Don't you want to hang out with me? They're like, no, no, I don't want you to hang out. And I'm like, but where are you going? What, what's going on? Can I come? And they're like, no, no, you're not cool enough. Um, don't you want to teach me that TikTok dance? No. no <laughs> I'm like, but your girlfriend will. They're like, no, she's not going to teach you. So I think it's seeing those blessings and understanding that this is such a short time. Um, you know, I think, I think that's been one of the positives from it. Um, no, I, I think that that was a wonderful way to wrap up this conversation because you really all displayed the, the positives and negatives that you have gone through as mompreneurs. I'm going to steal your word because I love that, Nicole. Um, and business owners and business women, like the reality is you know, we chose you to come together as a panel because we recognize you as who you are. You know, you are independent, strong, intelligent, talented women that we are lucky to have in our community, but we are lucky to know you. We are lucky to have you and we are lucky to hear from you. So thank you so much for coming together today. And I know we've said this before, but we'll say it again. You truly did speak to the masses, not just to the women in this Zoom call. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Current events have caused a tidal wave of change in our community. And we've realized rather quickly that those who have flexibility and are able to pivot are those that are truly thriving. 
Thank you again to Florida Credit Union for being the presenting sponsor of our All In GNV Pivot Series. And thank you again to our speaker sponsor, Cox Business. Also, thank you to our annual sponsors and our circle of champions and our media partners who help underwrite this program.